Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is July 12th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the so-called anti-Wall Street candidate has officially announced his endorsement for Hillary Clinton. I have come here to make it as clear as possible as to why I am endorsing Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders folds and wants his followers to vote for the Queen of Wall Street. Then, a petition to declare Black Lives Matter a terrorist organization has quickly reached a hundred plus thousand signatures and growing. Plus, more inside baseball on the mindset of FBI boss James Comey, who not only recently cleared Hillary Clinton on all charges, but we now know that Comey has connections to the Clinton Foundation. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Recently, a petition launched to recognize Black Lives Matter as an official terrorist organization. And if you go to whitehouse.gov, you can see that it has over 100,000 signatures. Now, uh, many people are going to find out the hard way that when you do petitions on whitehouse.gov, they're just basically a suggestion box. Like if you go to a, a restaurant or a movie theater and they say, hey, put your suggestions here. It doesn't really mean anything. There's been many petitions on whitehouse.gov that, that even though they got the required number of signatures, the White House didn't even bother to address. Some things were just, you know, kind of goofy, funny things like build a real Death Star, other things that are a little more serious. They said, uh, we don't care. So uh, take that for what it is. But now I want to spend a little bit of time talking about Black Lives Matter in people's view of them of as a terrorist organization, because I think like anything, there's many assets and facets to the organization. And I'll give you the example of the police, right? So uh, you can see plenty of videos out there of police doing wrong, you know, police shooting some unarmed guy in the back or choking a guy to death because he was selling cigarettes or, you know, beating a guy to death over the course of 20 minutes while he is screaming for, you know, mercy and for his daddy to come and save him and on and on and on. And that's one aspect of the police, but it's not the aspect of the police. On the flip side, you have the videos of cops you know, saving little cats out of trees or walking kids home in a bad neighborhood or giving boots to a homeless man. So yes, while the bad stuff happens, also the good stuff happens as well. And you can't just pick one side or the other to view uh, the police departments as in the United States of America. Conversely, when you talk about a group like Black Lives Matter, I've personally witnessed th these guys in various cities around the, around the country, you know, start fires or, you know, loot uh, shopping centers or you know do other heinous things also you see the videos of them jumping on hoods of cars uh, interrupting veteran ceremonies harassing people for having lunch just because they're white or whatever else but on the flip side of that i've also personally seen these guys go out and march peacefully without incident i'm seeing them have uh, candlelight vigils uh prayer meetings at churches and on and on and on but that stuff doesn't get the type of publicity that the negative stuff does because it's not as sensational it doesn't sell as many newspapers or doesn't get as many clicks on YouTube. So while I do recognize, and I'm definitely not trying to downplay the, black, the bad things that Black Lives Matter has done, I also recognize the good things that don't get as much publicity. Also, when you talk about a group like Black Lives Matter, to make a very, very loose comparison, when you think about a group like Anonymous, where anybody can be anonymous, all you have to do is go buy a Guy Fox mask, turn off the lights, shoot a, a video and put it on YouTube and you're uh, considered a part of Anonymous. In a similar way, anybody can go buy a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. And since there's no governing body, nobody to say, yes, you can be in, no, your membership is revoked. Anybody can be a part of the group. So you have to take all this in consideration when you just wanna say the group in general is a terrorist organization. Also, another thing I wanna point out, just being personally at many of these events, a lot of times when there's you know one guy wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt in a rally, Usually it's more than one, but it's using that example. If there's one and something bad happens, like those examples I said, people jumping on cars or rioting or looting buildings, Black Lives Matter in general gets the blame, even if those people weren't self-identifying as Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter's members. Uh, because once again, you know, when you have something that's just anybody can sign up for or say they're a part of, you do it. When they see these guys on TV with the pants down looting the quick trip or whatever it is. Did you stop and ask these guys, are they Black Lives Matter? Do they self-identify as Black Lives Matter? Do they uh, put Black Lives Matter things on their Facebook and Twitter pages? So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is every time you see a black person at a rally doing something negative doesn't mean that they're affiliated with Black Lives Matter. 
And that's the point I'm really trying to drive home here. Because I think uh, while I do recognize the bad things that they've done, oftentimes it's such a generalized thing that uh, they just assume that these people are affiliated with Black Lives Matter or have Black Lives Matter sympathies when sometimes they really don't. It's just maybe there were Black Lives Matter there, but there are other people who weren't affiliated with the group at all. And they also could have been doing good or bad things. So by and large, I think with a wide brush to paint them as a terrorist organization, I think is too much. It'd be, like I said, to say the police are terrorists. You got good police, you got bad police. You got good people at these rallies, you got bad people at these rallies. And just to blanket call them one thing or another, I think is a, a very crude oversimplification. But uh, that's my thought on that. And only time to tell, um, because things are getting pretty hot in the country right now. People trying to start race wars for whatever reason. I think that they think is a good idea. It's failed rather spectacularly. If you guys remember the case of Dylan Roof down in Charleston, South Carolina, his goal when he shot up the church was to start a race war. You know, nobody was buying that, at least down there. And, you know, it's a very peaceful time. I was actually very glad to be down there and see how the city decided to turn to posit positivity instead of turning on itself and rioting and burning stuff. I think the worst thing that happened while I was there was a statue got spray painted. And if that's the worst thing that <laughs> happens in Charleston, South Carolina, I think you guys should consider yourself very lucky. Uh, that it's a little, little different in the city of Dallas, Texas. Uh, they say they've had a long history of uh, questionable police activities. A lot of the officers have recently left Dallas, uh, I believe. In May alone, they had uh, 40 or so officers leave and go to various apartments. More left in June, if I remember correctly. So it's a big problem that's not going to be solved anytime soon. But just the general terrorist label, I don't think is accurate and just an oversimplification. Now, let's talk about some other things going on overseas. We see that Chinese, the Chinese president has ordered the People's Liberation Army to prepare for combat as a measure against possible hostile U.S. action in the South China Sea after an international tribunal ruled that Beijing had no exclusive control over the area. The permanent court of arbitration said that there was no evidence that China had historically exercised exclusive control over the waters or resources, reports the BBC. China responded by labeling the ruling ill-founded and refused to be bound by it. However, behind the scenes, the Chinese president fears that the U.S. could seize on the ruling to justify aggressive military maneuvers in the area and has ordered PLA forces to prepare for war. China's Navy has repeatedly issued warnings to U.S. surveillance planes flying over the region. In more domestic news, people are feeling the burn, but not in the way that they did earlier this year. They're feeling burned by Bernie Sanders with his endorsement of Madden Clinton. And we see that uh, people are taking to Twitter, they're taking to uh, their, their social media platforms to say, I am so disappointed that Bernie Sanders sold out millions and many of us fell for it. One former fan tweeted, never again. Personally, I don't think I will support Hillary. I don't trust her, a Sanders fan told Fortune. I can't see myself backing someone I don't believe in. And it goes on and on from there. Because if you guys recall, Bernie Sanders was supposed to be the guy who was anti-establishment. He's going to come in and he's going to bust up the banks, and he's not like these other career politicians who got all the, the dirt and the, and the skeletons in the closet. And then he turns around and he <laughs> endorses the person who has all the dirt and the skeletons in the closet. And I'm not a Sanders supporter, nor was I ever, but I did like him more than Mrs. Clinton because in a very similar way to Obama, I wanted to believe in what he was saying and what his intentions were. You know, because people always say, uh, you know, he says he's going to do this, he says he wants to do that. Look at the presidents throughout history. Even if they really wanted to do all the things they said in their campaign speeches, how many of those things did they actually accomplish? Just uh, look at Ob Obama, for example. He says he's going to shut down Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay is still well and open. He uh, says he's going to end these foreign conflicts. Foreign conflicts are still going on. He said he's going to uh, repeal the Patriot Act, or at least not resign the Patriot Act. He resigned the Patriot Act, threw in the NDAA for good measure. Uh, per persecution of journalists and on and on and on and all these things in the most transparent administration in United States history. That and, and it's such a misnomer. I can't even say it without laughing. In a similar way, if I wanted to believe Bernie Sanders could actually do these things, it doesn't mean he would actually get them done. But to see him endorse Hillary Clinton, I'm really not a fan of that. I would have much preferred him just rode off into the sunset did his own thing. He's an old guy, but maybe he could have ran again in the next election cycle, but who knows? And I think he's pretty much uh, scorched the earth with his own supporters at this point. So if he did want to come out for another run, he uh, pretty much 
shot himself in the foot. But as we're talking about all things Clinton, let's talk about the FBI director uh, Comey and his decision not to prosecute Clinton. And we have this article from Kurt Nemo who dictates how uh, the FBI boss is connected to the Clinton Foundation. On Monday, Republicans sent a letter demanding to know why Comey didn't recommend federal charges against Hillary Clinton over her use of private email servers. Clinton clearly placed our nation's secrets in peril, the, later, the letter states. The letter also mentions emails deleted by Clinton and forensically recovered by the FBI. They want to know if the emails had anything to do with the Clinton Foundation. Comey did not recommend federal charges in part because he is connected to the Clinton Foundation through HSBC. Comey was appointed director of HSBC Holdings in March 2013. Now, once again, when we think about Bernie Sanders, he's going to bust up the big banks. He's not the career politician. He's not like all these other guys. He's an outsider. He's for you. He's going to fight the 1%. He's going to do all this stuff. He's going to give you free college and all the rest of it. And then he comes back and backs Miss, Mrs. Clinton, who wants to uh, be in, in good company with the big banks, who is being funded by the big banks, who has all the things, who is exactly the opposite on paper, uh, so we're told, of a Bernie Sanders. And now he's supporting her just to support the party line. This isn't the type of guy that uh, I'd want to support. And this is why I realized this so many months ago. I was like, well, you know, I don't think he's all that much different. Yeah, he can say all the talking points. He can uh, go after his niche type of audience, the young college students, all this. But at the end of the day, I think he's a career politician like any of these other guys. And that's exactly what the guy turned out to be. He showed his uh, true colors in a similar way that Ted Cruz did many months ago. Now we see uh, Mr. Sanders coming out and supporting Hillary Clinton, not saying let's go after her for the emails, even though he had previously mentioned that in his debates with her. We need to talk about the emails. We need to look at some of these other things. And now at the end of the day, when the rubber hits the road, he's willing to back his party no matter what. And this is my issue with political parties here in the United States of America, because people ask me, are you Republican? Are you a Democrat? Are you a Libertarian? My views are more libertarian in nature, but I don't support any one party because I don't want to be, you know, that straight ticket guy. I don't want to vote for a party or support a party just because I, I'm registered that on my voting log. That doesn't make sense to me because I don't want to back some guy that I don't believe in or back a policy that I don't believe in just because they write it on their ticket. If you want to be a true ex, you have to agree with everything that's on this list. Well, I don't agree with that, that, that. Well, you can't be in our club. Like, fine, I won't be in your club. You go run your club the way you want to. I'm not going to participate in this. I'm going to be like George Carlin this election. I'm going to sit back, watch everybody else wreck the country. I'm going to say, this was your fault. I had nothing to do with it. And this guy sent me something on Twitter a few months ago. And he was telling me about, uh, well, he was asking me why I didn't support Trump. And I gave him my reasons. I, you guys know those reasons. But um, he's like, this isn't the time for a conscientious vote. I was like, bro, it's been time for a conscientious vote ever since Kennedy got shot in the head. Because ever since then, and possibly even before then, you get all these people scrambling to their parties to save them. I don't like this guy, but I'm going to vote for this guy because he's in my party. I don't like her, but I'm going to vote for her because she's in my party. And at the end of the day, you get these guys who are handpicked by the same elites, or selected by the same elites, who have pretty much the same agendas. You look at uh, people in the Democratic Party, or the Republican Party. You see Marco Rubio and Hillary Clinton were being funded by the same people. Do you really think the people at the top really care who gets into the election? I, I don't think so. They have their hands in each pocket and you can debate to an extent Trump. I do think the guy's a little bit different, but at the same time, he's not somebody I'd write home about and uh, put all my faith in personally. But continuing on, we're gonna talk about some more Clinton news. Uh, the Attorney General Lynch has defended her social chat with Bill Clinton and has refused to comment on facts of the investigation, but decided to uh, some time ago to rubber stamp the FBI decision. Now, this is a classic conflict of interest. I give the example of jury duty. If you get selected for jury duty and you go in to the, to the courthouse and they say, hey, do you know person X? And you say, yeah, I know person X. And, you know, we hang out, we talk about our kids, we talk about sports. They say, excuse me, sir, uh, you're, you're let go. We don't want you on our jury. You're not a fair and impartial juror. Meanwhile, you have uh, the Attorney General of the United States of America who's ready to rubber stamp and she's good friends with the, with the Clintons to the fact where they can sit around and talk about their grandchildren. That is a blatant conflict of interest. Moving quickly now, I want to talk about uh, some of the recent shootings that happened here in the United States of America, and in particular, uh, a certain actor. And when I say this, I'm not blaming this actor. I'm just using him as a bellwether, as an example. 
He came out and he blamed the NRA for the Michigan courthouse shooting. If you guys don't recall, the two bailiffs got shot on Monday, or two bailiffs were murdered on Monday. Other people were shot. And basically, this was an inmate who stole a gun from a police officer, just like the guy who tried to kill Donald Trump. He stole a firearm. And then the tweets come out, and the guy, the, the, the celebrity is saying, hey, we need to ban the guns. It's the NRA's fault. F the NRA. And people said, uh, this guy stole a gun, just like the guy who tried to kill Trump. Which is to say, yeah, you can get your guns legally if you're a United States citizen, you don't have a criminal record and all of that. But at the same time, at the end of the day, if a criminal wants to get a gun, they are willing to steal a gun from an active duty conscious police officer. That, you know, banning guns isn't going to lessen crime in the United States of America. People may use a different weapon to commit their crime, but they're still going to uh, steal guns if they have to, if that's what they have to do to accomplish their goals. And now, real quickly, this is a sign of the times. People are so out of touch, they actually think that a porn star is about to become the prime minister over in the UK. And this is the uh, British lawmaker, Theresa May, and not the adult actress, as many people confused her with being. It's uh, somewhat of a funny article, and you can read that at your leisure. But finally tonight, going to warn you guys about Pokemon Go. Now, I'm not as critical about the app as some other people are, but just basically so you know, people are taking advantage of the app to rob you. So you got people looking around their phones, going into the woods, hey, I'm gonna catch some Pokemon, and then they you know, catch a bonk to the head because they got robbed by people who set them up over the app. So just something for you to know as we go in to our next segment. So stay tuned right after this break for more special reports. Attorney General Loretta Lynch was on the Hill today in front of the House Judiciary Committee at an oversight hearing on Justice Department operations. Regarding those operations, Attorney General Lynch stonewalled the committee with non-answers and legal diversion. Director Comey stated that there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information. Do you agree with Director Comey's statement? Again, I would refer you to Director Comey for any further explanation as to the basis for his recommendations. The recommendation that I received from the team, including Director Comey, but General was Lynch, that the investigation be resolved General Lynch, without charges. Director Comey made a recommendation, but he made a recommendation to the Department of Justice, which you had, uh, and you would have to come to the final conclusion on whether or not to act. I would presume uh, that before you acted, you would look at his conclusions and determine whether you agreed with them or not. Meanwhile, the Democrats used the opportunity to promote gun control. There is an epidemic of gun violence. And how has the majority in Congress responded? With emergency hearings about Hillary Clinton's and Lois Lerner's emails. Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson weighed in on the Democrats' perception that the hearings were unimportant to the protection of national security. My colleagues on the other <clears throat> side of the aisle don't. It's They're just tone deaf. And they insist on chasing rabbits down holes by trying to make some hay out of something that is, is, this is over with. You may remember Johnson once expressed concern over Guam tipping over. The whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. But Lynch could not avoid the clarity surrounding her decision to speak with Bill Clinton days before the decision and her declaration to support the FBI's investigation before the investigation was closed. You and have a conversation have that, with uh, the former president, the husband of the subject of an ongoing investigation, and you have that conversation before they've interviewed the subject and before they've reached their recommendations and finished their investigation. That's what triggered you to do this thing you've never done before which is announced, I don't care what they recommend, I'm going to follow it. My concern was that, that the, the conversation that I had with President Clinton would be seen by some as having an influence over that. I felt it was important to clarify. Just some, Geronimo Lynch, role. a lot and of people. And I but now, as Kurt Nimmo writes, FBI Director James Comey's past and present employment as director of HSBC's holdings and subsequent promotion to independent non-executive director and a member of the Financial System Vulnerabilities Committee, an appointment set to expire this year, clearly has blatant ties to the Clinton Foundation. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlot of Virginia and committee member Representative Trey Gowdy of South Carolina 
want to know if the emails that were deleted and recovered by the FBI had anything to do with the Clinton Foundation. The Mexican drug cartel money laundering Swiss bank, HSBC, is connected to the Clinton Foundation through a number of initiatives, including its Building the Corporate Coalition, investing in management and leadership in Vietnam, and other American economy-destroying free trade agreement projects. Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, and a number of transnational corporations also participate. The Clintons have used the foundation to enrich themselves. Documents disclosed through litigation by Judicial Watch provided a roadmap for over 200 conflict of interest rulings that led to at least $48 million in speaking fees for the Clintons during Hillary Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton and her aides were involved in fundraising for the foundation, and she turned the State Department into the D.C. office of the Clinton Foundation, something she will now do to the White House. What will it take to convince every American citizen that they are being scammed at the highest levels? In my next report, I will be digging into Comey's involvement into Whitewater. Comey's protection of the Clinton corruption machine goes way back. John Bound for Infowars.com. Since Bernie Sanders came out and announced his candidacy for the president of the United States, he began to hit Hillary Clinton hard, labeling her as one of the most corrupt politicians America has ever seen. The fact that she took money from Goldman Sachs, the fact that she is the queen of Wall Street, Let's take a look at a few clips to prove what Bernie Sanders said about her connections with Wall Street. Secretary Clinton has a number of super PACs. One of her super PACs recently reported that they raised $25 million from special interest, $15 million from Wall Street alone. I don't take money from big banks. I don't get personal speaking fees from Goldman Sachs. Here's the story. I mean, you know, let's not be naive about it. I have never heard a candidate, never, who has received huge amounts of money from oil, from coal, from Wall Street, from the military industrial complex. Not one candidate said, oh, these, these campaign contributions will not influence me. I'm going to be independent. Well, why do they make millions of dollars of campaign contributions? They expect to get something. Everybody knows that. Basically, Governor, he has Secretary basically Clinton used gets to his respond. answer to impugn my integrity. Let's be no, frank here. Oh, wait a minute, Senator. Did it have anything to do with the fact that Wall Street provided, spent billions of dollars on lobbying and campaign contributions? Well, some people might think, yeah, that had some influence. One of us has a super PAC. One of us has raised $15 million from Wall Street for that super PAC. One of us has given speeches on Wall Street for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, I kind of think if you get paid a couple of hundred thousand dollars for a speech, must be a great speech. I think we should release it and let the American people see what that transcript was. Every candidate in the history of the world, Democrat, Republican, when they receive huge amounts of money from Wall Street or the drug companies or the fossil fuel industries, what they always say, not going to impact me. <laughs> and our question is, if it's not going to impact their decisions, why would Wall Street be spending $15 million? think that you are qualified if you get $15 million from Wall Street through your super PAC. I don't think you are qualified if you have voted for the disastrous war in Iraq. I have come here to make it as clear as possible as to why I am endorsing Hillary Clinton. And I intend to do everything I can to make certain she will be the next president of the United States. We've seen incredible gullibility out of the Republican Party's constituents over the years. 
Just look at all the lies that George W. Bush supporters put up with. But I got to tell you, Democrats take the cake, especially Bernie Sanders supporters. He came out yesterday and said that, oh, we've realized so many of our goals and we're so victorious and now I'm throwing my support to Hillary. When Hillary is the most corporate, most crony capitalist candidate out of the entire field we've seen the last two years. I mean, she makes Donald Trump look like the outsider he is. And it's so sad to see Bernie supporters who are committed to getting their so-called free lunch, buying into anything and everything that the Democratic Party pitches at them. It's so clear that the big money and the big media and all the big robber barons are lined up against Donald Trump. But most of the former Bernie supporters out there that are being pulled are saying, hey, we're going for Hillary. It's truly shameful. Then the corporate media that sells us all these illegal wars and all these other lies is telling us Donald Trump's an evil racist and the worst person in the world and that we all need to support Hillary because that's the best thing to do and that it's good to go out and demonstrate and protest against the local police because they're corrupt. That's the big, out of control, federal government bought and paid for by foreign interests that militarized the police to be their enforcers. Now, because they're concerned about an American style Brexit out of the North American Union and globalism, they're trying to trigger the revolution that's brewing against local government and police. They're trying to distract the public at the same time, bring in a type of soft civil war where the UN can then be the honchos of the reorganization of the United States. Look at the riots all over the country, the police stations being shot up, the police being killed. Can you just walk up to police you don't even know the name of and randomly say you deserve to die? And some will say, well, they do that to some citizens. Statistically, police killings are flat even as the crime rate that's been lower for 20 years starts to go up because the economy is imploding. All Americans are starting to see, on average, their living standards go down. We're seeing our basic freedoms under attack. We are collectively, as a citizenry, under attack. And it was so exciting a few weeks ago to see the Brexit, which was a move against globalism, led by the Ron Paul slash Alex Jones slash Matt Drudge of Europe, Nigel Farage, to see that for days be the number one search term, to have more search terms than all porn terms combined. There was one other search term that was also number one for a day and in the top five for an entire week. That was Hillary for prison. It shows the power of we, the populist peoples, the libertarians, the liberta, the true liberators, the liberals, not the controllers, not the counterfeit liberals and their Republican cohorts who are trying to shackle and control this huge awakening that's taking place. I'm going to Cleveland in just a few days. I'm going to be there for the full week of the RNC. We're also sending a crew to the DNC. And we're going to be standing up for the truth. We're going to be exposing that the Republican Party has said they're still going to try to steal the nomination from Donald Trump. We're going to be there exposing the social justice warriors and how programmed they are. And we're gonna be putting airplanes in the sky that point out that Hillary should be sent to prison, not the White House. We're gonna have trucks driving around town with the same thing on the side, all because you've taken action and believed in us, we believed in you, and the info war is having a giant effect. Now, I've got other reports coming up today that deal with the assault on reality, the attempt to get the average person to not be politically or culturally involved. We're gonna be looking at some of the big phenomenons in AI and augmented reality, the new Pokemon Go phenomenon and more. And David Knight's gonna be breaking down with his guest, Anthony Gucciardi and others, the latest breaking news and taking your phone calls. But make no mistake, when the entire establishment and the entire media that we know are a pack of criminal liars, discredited frauds are telling us that Hillary Clinton's our Lord and Savior, if we really elect her, a lot of people deserve what they get. All I know is I feel like America and the whole world's reached the point of no return. 
It's not that Donald Trump is a perfect solution, but he's a protest against everything we've seen so far. And I hope that we can live up to what our cousins in the UK have done and send out a signal in 2016 that we too are leaving corporate world government, corporate unelected globalism that was rejected in the Brexit. That's what a Donald Trump victory would be. It's time for Americans to wake up. It's time to make America free again. And that will make this country great again. Now we're gonna to go to our guest who is Blair White, a YouTuber, transgender commentator. You can search Blair White on Twitter or YouTube. Her account will come up. And again, when this goes up on YouTube, we'll put the links in the description. Now, Blair, you posted a video about a week ago, I think, called Black Lives Matter is Trash. <laughs> you went straight out there with it, got Shameful. in people's faces, basically, with the truth. You know, the video talked about, and in fact, we can see some of it in the background here. You talked about how these Black Lives Matter morons crashed this vigil to the Orlando massacre victims to reinforce their oppression at Olympics hierarchy. And then you basically went through the fact that Black Lives Matter as a movement has completely failed. You know, we got race relations, the worst in modern history. We've got black people still killing each other in droves. Now Black Lives Matter, the ideology is inspiring actual terrorists to go out and kill people. And of course, the big one for me, millions of Americans are now not even interested in police brutality or, or addressing it as an issue because of its association with this colossally stupid, violent and divisive Black Lives Matter movement. Now, you put out this video. Tell us what was in the video and what happened after you posted it. Okay, so in the video, it was, um, I think it was at Mizzou, and it was a Black Lives Matter activist who hijacked the stage and the microphone to basically advertise Black Lives Matter um, racial demonstrations and say that the people that were there to mourn the deaths of the 49 people slain in the Orlando shooting were racist, um, implying that they were unintelligent because they were white, and basically just using it to push her own narrative rather than to be respectful for what it was, which was, you know, mourning 49 slain people. It's pretty amazing. And we, we saw the same thing in, I think it was Toronto, Canada, last weekend, where they, again, they hijacked this gay pride march to yeah. reinforce this oppression Olympics. I think there's this fear that, you know, their control of that narrative of gay people in general, of this LGBT community, which you're a member of, is starting to slip away. And those people are being relegated. They're being put up at the bottom of the uh, oppression Olympics hierarchy. And they're trying mm -hmm. to reinforce, again, their supremacy, because Black Lives Matter is a divisive supremacist group, above those people, because, again, they're starting to listen to people like you, people like me. I mean, after Orlando, I got so many positive messages from gay people, from LGBT people, you know, saying yeah. that they were buying guns. They were starting to watch conservative libertarian YouTube videos. They were starting to think about voting for Donald Trump because they're just sick of being yeah. told what to think by the left. So you posted this um, video and then the, the peaceful Black Lives Matter group, Sally Cohn and CNN told me it was peaceful. So I guess it is. They weren't too happy with it. Tell us what happened afterwards. No, you know, unlike when I make a video about say feminism, um, where you'll have like two feminists in the comment sections arguing, um, Black Lives Matter is actually very organized. And if they set a target, they're coming for a target. And basically what happened was one prominent Twitter in the Black Lives Matter, I don't know, community um, shared my video. And then from there, it was just like they descended, which is totally fine because I make videos to encourage, you know, discourse and disagreement and everything. Um, but no one really challenged the ideas in my video. They just kind of made, you know, ad hominem attacks. And eventually a Twitter um, got a hold of me. They're a doxing Twitter. And on their timeline, they had docs, like dozens and dozens of people, including their addresses, phone numbers, um, other information, employers. Well, that's it for our show tonight. We do encourage you to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rents, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command.